Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. We are at the SDN and NFV World Congress in The Hague in the Netherlands and I'm talking with Gabriele Di Piazza who is Vice President Solutions, Telco and Edge Cloud Business Unit at VMware. Yeah. Gabriele, great to see you again. Nice to see you. We yeah. meet in strange parts of the world, not that the Hague yeah. is particularly strange, but <laughs> glad yeah. to see you here. Let's get yeah. straight into it like this. Yeah. Um, why are automation and orchestration becoming central themes to the telco cloud evolution? Yeah, I think we, uh, we're probably just at the beginning of this journey in uh, cloudification and, you know, uh, in the telco space. So central because uh, even if complex uh, uh, topics have been uh, solved so far, I think the most complex part is actually ahead of us. Uh, you know, uh, distributed edges, uh, services that needs to actually be uh, provided uh, straight to the edge or far edge of the network. Uh, and therefore, you now start to look at uh, deployment of functions, applications, networks, uh, across maybe thousands, 10,000, 40,000, 50,000 endpoints. And also functions that are becoming more dynamic from static. So that's why I think the whole topic of automation is central now for the future success of what's going to happen in a true telco cloud environment. Thank you. What do you think of the core capabilities, Gabriele, of telco cloud orchestration and automation? Why is VMware so deeply involved in it? Yeah. Uh, I would say our presence in this space grew very, very fast. And we now have a customer base of you know, over you know, 80 to 90 service providers leveraging our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, but more in general, I would say cloud technology has been adopted in, uh, uh, in, in the core network and now moving to the edge of the network. Therefore, uh, our capabilities are deep into the roots of what cloud means, how to actually build it, program it, automate it, and so forth. If you look at our uh, proposition in this uh, automation orchestration space, it's really down to fundamentally look at every type of resource uh, being available to a ability to program it. So building a catalog of uh, virtual network functions or VNF management, how to actually have modeling, design, onboarding, instantiation lifecycle taking all of those resources and leveraging uh, uh, in, uh, in order to build network services, but especially looking at the cloud-first approach, where we actually look at every resource available in the cloud, catalog, catalog all of them, and actually being able to actually program uh, effective functions on top of this. You call that cloud first. I mean, yeah. it does what it says, presumably. You look yeah. at cloud before everything else. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I think that's a major differentiation because of who we are. Uh, Cloud first, because uh, if you don't take a cloud first approach, somehow you still fall back in an old thinking about telco networks. And I think we just passed that, uh, you know, midpoint of, you know, I always say there's a telco cloud, too much telco, too less cloud. I think we passed that midpoint. So cloud first means solve the problem of cloud. Uh, think of how you can build a cloud in a multi-vendor, uh, you know, in a multi-domain type of environment and then now start building from cloud up in a, anything that can be basically programmed approach. In fact, to some extent, we see a gap in the industry of non-cloud vendors trying to come probably from, uh, from top down, but not understanding uh, deeply what cloud is. Okay, good. Interesting point. Let's stay with VMware's cloud-first approach for a little longer. What's the approach then in regard to orchestration? Yeah. Uh, our approach in orchestration is how do we enable uh, ability to basically uh, uh, connect, catalog, inventory, and program services across any type of cloud, uh, any type of uh, virtualized infrastructure management, uh, 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 whether it's VMware uh, uh, proprietary, you know, open uh, APIs or OpenStack APIs or Edge or Kubernetes APIs or even public cloud APIs and how to actually enable services that can uh, dynamically move across these different clouds. And all of these fundamentally connected with telemetry, assurance, placement, and artificial intelligence to basically drive uh, this capability. A last question to you then, Gabrielli. What's next? How do you see the next six months, a year, panning out as far as 
everything we've been talking about is concerned for I, VMware. I think there's a, a lot of involvement where uh, I would say uh, the best customers are really the customers that we have uh, been working for quite some time. And we're taking down a journey sometimes in a multi, you know, hundreds plus virtual network functions. Now uh, they are, you know, expecting us to step up and basically taking them further down in the journey. How do we automate all of this, the next generation services? Good stuff, Gabriele De Piazza. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Martin.